Hi, today I want to talk about freelance marketplaces and my journey with Upwork, Fiverr, TopTel and Cadillant. I'm going to cover what the most popular platforms are, which I just went through, but I'll tell you a little bit more about that. Uh, how they're different. I think that's a very, very interesting thing to talk about. My experiences based on having tried these four different marketplaces and a bunch of other ones. And then I want to dive deep into best practices for Upwork, what worked, what didn't work, and then major problems that I'm seeing with Upwork. So let's dive right to, into it without further ado. Why do marketplaces matter for freelancers, solopreneurs, and SMEs that are trying to get started or are looking for more revenue? Well, marketplaces create trust between buyers and sellers. They're a critical component of go-to-market strategies, whether you're in technology, in e-commerce, or in, or in services. You cannot ignore them. In technology, you will be dependent on platforms like G2. In in e-commerce, Amazon or Walmart are likely driving a lot of revenue for you and you need to be on there or you can use something like Shopify. And in services, it is these marketplaces in addition to stuff that can build trust for you like Clutch or Trustpilot. But you really need marketplaces as part of your go-to-market technology stack or just go-to-market strategy as anyone in services that is not working at an established organization like a McKinsey, a Boston Consulting Group. It doesn't make sense for these types of organizations to work with marketplaces, but for SMEs and for solopreneurs, they're absolutely critical. Now, what else could you try? In addition to that, you could try things like channel partnerships, client referrals, sales funnels, social, especially LinkedIn, combined with automation tools like Alfred or Relaxy, you could try a content strategy. You can certainly also go to trade shows, but marketplaces are your fastest route to market because clients are coming there, they're looking for stuff and they have existing demand so you can capture it. You don't need to create it. You don't need to chase it. You need to capture it and it's always faster for going to market. So having said that, mentioned the four top marketplaces that I see are the most popular one. There are lots of other ones, especially freelancer.com is huge in Australia. You got A Connect, which is large in in the in the duck region, so Germany, Switzerland, and Austria, though it's very selective. You got places like Bain, uh, Brain Trust, many others. The most popular ones, and also the ones you can realistically get into, depending on your skill set, are these four. Now, how are they different? Here are how they're different. Upwork has traction with with what is called projects. So clients come, they post projects, they say, "I have need ABC." And you are either going to get an inbound as a freelancer. So Upwork suggests clients sets of freelancers that are qualified for the type of project based on probably some smart algorithmic matching um, tools. And you as a freelancer, and it's very important, have the ability to search for projects that have been listed and pitch on that. That does give you the ability, and we will talk about that, to get started cold. Fiverr, on the other hand, specializes on gigs, which means productized services, usually for a low price point, but there are somewhat higher priced gigs too, that these freelancers that are delivering them can deliver it at scale and at volume, but again, for relatively low prices. So that's, you know, Fiverr comes from getting stuff done for five USD, five euro, wherever you're based. TopTel, on the other hand, is for top quality and from a freelancer perspective, it does the hunting for you. It is much more selective than Upwork and Fiverr in terms of the talent that it takes in. So you have to go through an application process. And Cadillant, as far as I can say, seems to be positioning itself as a marketplace for more enterprise types of deals. And it has implications too that I want to talk about next in experiences. Now, my experiences with these four large and popular marketplaces for freelancers and, you know, frankly, just generally services is Upwork for me worked extremely well. My entire business started on Upwork. I'm extremely grateful for the platform. Highly recommend. Fiverr, I see great potential and I tell you about that later on, but I see also challenges around customer lifetime value. Customers that come to Fiverr are short on cash on average. It feels like that. You have massive amounts of competition, all which are undercutting pricing. But again, uh, there is a potential to come into higher. There is a potential to productize. And there is also the potential to 
Ah, I forgot what I was going to say, but anyways, Fiverr, mixed feelings, but I see potential. TopTal, I've, um, I'm have i sure there is potential with that platform, especially if you're a coder. I think it's not so good for anyone coming from the growth, go-to-market perspective or the finance venture capital perspective, though I think your finance and venture capital vertical are better. What I tried to do when I wanted to get into TopTal is um, apply for the finance venture capital vertical and essentially what they had me do is like, a, you can think of it like an exam that I had to take back at school. And I was essentially saying, man, I've just worked in venture capital for five years. This has nothing to do with what venture capital actually looks like. Went through it and then discarded it and obviously didn't, didn't get in. So take that as a, with a grain of salt, maybe what I'm saying here with regard to TopTel, but I wasn't impressed. And the uh, I found the application process to, complete, to be completely ridiculous because it had nothing to do with the skills that are required to be in VC. Um, and, and I say this as someone who studied at the London School of Economics at Duke University and at very reputable schools uh, in Switzerland. So, you know, if anyone should be qualified to get into the finance vertical, it should be me, frankly. Now, Catalan, I think there is an interesting potential here because it focuses on enterprise, or at least that's what it seems to focus on. Again, haven't really made that work from my perspective, similar to TopTel. Um, <clears throat> obviously, if you find a platform that has higher value clients, the potential for higher customer lifetime value matters a great deal for your business. My experience with Catalan, though, is that um, I have started to started to apply for projects and send out proposals there. Either the customers did not proceed with the project on Catalan. So Catalan, back when I tried this, was in the process of figuring out its product market fit too and how to get customers to stick around. And at the same time, because of the focus on enterprise, you start competing with very high talent, high end talent that comes from consulting firms like McKinsey, Boston Consulting Group, and Bain, which I don't have that background. I'm a, I'm a former investor, company builder, I've, I'm a founder. And so that was just from a profile perspective, a little bit more challenging on my, on my end. Again, quick, quick summary, Upwork was great to get started. I think the key factor here was the ability to go outbound, right? If you are getting started, you don't have any, any reviews on your profile, you're not going to get any inbounds on Upwork, forget about that. But Upwork does give you the ability to go outbound. On Fiverr, I listed, I saw lots of competitors in my categories um, make sense. It's a saturated marketplace. The issue is that as far as I can say, frankly, I haven't done so many, I haven't posted so many gigs on Fiverr and I think there's definitely potential for me to improve my profile. But on Fiverr, you don't have the ability in the beginning to go outbound. So you depend on people coming to you. Um, once you have enough project volume, once you have done many of your gigs or a certain number of your gigs successfully, then you can start to advertise or so run ads. That I th see as having the potential for you to generate more leads. Whereas in the beginning, the cold start on, on Fiverr is challenging and you probably have to either buy your own gigs, which costs you money because commission will go to Fiverr, or you have to uh, channel you know, traffic from outside of Fiverr to Fiverr, which we can talk about whether that's a great strategy or whether that's what you should be doing, honestly, in order to get started on a marketplace. I don't think so but it's an option you have. So Upwork, great. Fiverr, somewhat more limited, especially for newbies. TopTel, what the fuck, Catalan, um, somewhat of a mixed feeling. Uh, I would love Enterprise to work out. It just doesn't seem to have gotten to where it needs to be in terms of its product market fit. Hopefully it gets there, high potential. Now, best practices for Upwork. I just want to give you a perspective on my profile on Upwork so that you know that I'm not just bullshitting here. Um, but you see it here, essentially I'm, uh, you know, I've built this profile in, in under 12 months. And what I mean by built this profile, uh, is I've made these earnings in under 12 months. Uh, I'm expert vetted, which is, uh, the talent managers reached out to me on Upwork after I had enough positive reviews, enough total earnings, enough total hours, enough total projects, etc. And it's essentially where the top 1% are in, in like a special program that's supposed to be for enterprise. And then there are other ratings and badges that you can get like top rated plus. So when I click on see public view, I'm a top rated plus freelancer on Upwork too, which is about the th top 3% of freelancers on Upwork. Um, so I, I've had my share of success on this platform, uh, highly satisfied clients, ongoing contracts. It's driven tons of volume for me on and off the platform. So I'm very appreciative of Upwork as one, a lead generation source, a marketplace and um, a social proof mechanism because I can refer clients to this and say, hey, look at all of these happy clients. I'm not lying. I can actually do this, right? And that's a pretty 
pretty important thing to be able to do in order to find and win new clients at a lower customer acquisition cost. Uh, by the way, I'm not affiliated in any way with Upwork. They're not sponsoring this video. Um, I'm purely trying to share my experience because I know that there are many people trying to make a living, uh, trying to earn a little bit more money on the site. And um, I want to talk to you about some of the best practices that I've seen with Upwork because, again, looking at what's available, uh, it seems to be the best platform in terms of um, you know being successful as a freelancer and, frankly, as an SME. Now there are certain best practices. Uh, so we're now looking at at the post-it number four on this on this uh, on the on this visual here that you want to consider for Upwork. First, you have to get started with outbound. Upwork does give you the ability. Everyone does it. Um, inbounds are not going to happen for you when you get started. At my level, it starts to work. Um, I I you know won multiple clients through inbounds. At some point, I had to shut off my availability batch. So I think I can switch back quickly here. You see um, below the location where I am, I'm based in, in, in Basel in Switzerland. I'm available now. I had to shut that off sometime last year because I got too many inbounds. Um, and that w and, and also increased my price, to be honest. As you can see, I'm pretty expensive on the platform. And so you, you gotta go out by in the beginning, inbound comes later. The second one is client management, right? You're working with clients. So whenever you're a freelancer, you just gotta be good at handling, uh, you know, easy, more complicated clients. You will run into both types pretty much guaranteed um, they can make your life terrible so try to optimize for the great ones but sometimes the bad ones have a higher willingness to pay because they know they're, they're challenging um, in addition what i find very very important is that you go through a proper scoping uh, you know process do take a little bit of time up front in order to define what the proposal is in order to find to, to suss out what the customer really needs Otherwise, you don't know what success looks like. You don't know what timeline they have. You don't know what resources they're willing to deploy. And that sets you up for failure. And then obviously, once you have done that part of client management, which is around scoping and proposal, you want to deliver on it, right? And that sets you up for asking for a five-star review. That's part of client management. And a five-star review is really what you need. You cannot afford even a single one-star, two-star, or three-star review. Maybe the occasional four-star is okay. But if you have a track record of negative reviews, I think you're just toast on the platform or you're extremely limited in your pricing capability. I'm gonna switch back here quickly just to show this. I'm actually charging 200 USD per hour. Of course, charging as much money as this has completely, I mean, has completely not shut down, but extremely reduced the number of inbounds that I get, but the ones I get do make money for me. And when I go outbound, I may not charge 200 USD in the final proposal, but I, I go down to let's say 150, 175, which is still very attractive from a margin perspective. So it's all driven by those five-star reviews. When I first started, I did not start with 200, 150, 175 USD per hour. I started with, I think it was 65, my first client. Once I saw that 65 works, I tried 85. Once I saw that 85 works, I tried 125. Once I saw that 125 works, I went to 150. And once I went to 150, I sold out my complete available time and I ran into a different issue that I'm going to talk about in this video a little bit later with regard to major problems that you will find with Upwork, which is scalability. So I had to increase my price further in, in, in order to shut down as much as possible inbound and outbound success and focus on the ones that have the ability to pay. All right, so that's all client management. I'm going to repeat quickly, um, <clears throat> get good at handling clients do proper scoping, ask for a five-star review, encourage it. And in addition to that, I think you want to do two other things here. One, customize your proposals. Many freelancers are sending out templatized proposals. You can certainly templatize certain parts of your proposal, but do read through the project description. Try to see whether you can find the location that's included where the person is based so you can reference that. Maybe you can check out the previous reviews of that customer to include their name in your proposal since some freelancers will have reviewed that customer um, or that employer, I should say, or that hiring manager and included their name in their review, which is a great, great source for building report quickly. And um, ultimately, I think one additional trick that I find very helpful for, for Upwork is to regularly review Upwork from the client perspective, maybe even hire um, a freelancer every now and then on Upwork to see what the quality of freelancers is, what the common issues are that you have with freelancers and knowing that will differentiate you. I started using Upwork as a client for my previous startup where we hired engineers, designers and other talent. And obviously that set me up for success because I understood what clients are struggling with and how to differentiate versus 
the somewhat you know more challenging experiences at times that we were having. Great. So that's all around client management. Proper profile is also an obvious one. You definitely want to have a clean description. You want to build out your portfolio as you win and close contracts. And I think what is completely underappreciated but has been a game changer for me is including a video on my profile. I'm going to switch back to my profile here quickly again. Below meet Rafael Sarim. You will you see that um, I included a video, founder and VC building and executing winning growth strategies. Uh, Zenoc Labs is my company. I've heard so many times that clients appreciated me including a video here where um, <clears throat> they see that I speak English, they see that I have experience in terms of what I'm talking about, that I have good communication skills. All of these are important capabilities for winning in the digital age. So this is definitely one that I find personally underappreciated. Now there are lots of tricks when it comes to how to set up a clean description or just generally how to set up your description. I think one resource that you should definitely reference when it comes to figuring out how to set that up is, is I think his name is Evan Schwartz. He has multiple videos on how to you know build winning proposals and how to build um, how to build how to build uh, winning descriptions. And I guess that brings me to an additional thought in terms of best practices, not just review the clients, uh, not just use Upwork from the client perspective because it keeps changing for, up, for clients. Upwork continuously refines features, adds new features. You, you also want to look at what competing freelancers are doing. Uh, that was, was definitely important. Uh, now, there is another category of s things here. One, switch on your um, availability batch. As I have it, I'm going to switch back to my profile. Sorry for the back and forth. You see the availability batch again below my below my location. This means that you get a special tag when 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 clients search for freelancers. They see that that you are available right now, that you have capacity to talk to new people and work with new people and that increases your inbounds. It does cost money. You have to spend what Upwork calls connects on it, uh, but that's the cost of being in business. And quite frankly, it's pretty low. If you if you have a high enough hourly rate, that, that should definitely be able to, you should definitely be able to pay for that. And the second one is that you want to pay for boosting whenever you submit a proposal. Upwork has now introduced the ability to pay for boosting, both paying for availability and paying for boosting, or just also having to spend connects in order to submit proposals. One makes sure that the number of proposals every client receives stays limited because it costs money. And two, it, I think it has a positive effect on uh, the overall price level on the platform where you cannot come in and charge almost nothing if you have to pay for everything, right? Um, it means that there is less competition from, from low price providers, which is annoying for me. And I'll talk about that too in a little bit and should definitely change, so that's great. And then the third and last item here under the other category is that you need to think about your pricing strategy. The pricing strategy matters. I told you about my progression up to 200 USD and what my current thinking is around 200 USD has definitely, again, reduced um, the number of inbounds that I get and the outbound success that I have. But I am at, at a level where I'm trying to move away from Upwork because it has pretty severe challenges for me to grow my business that are limiting my business growth. And so I've set the price so high that I, 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 you know, almost eliminate traction on the platform. If I were to reduce it, I'll increase that again. And I know I can increase it. So I feel very comfortable about that as a backup option if I need it. And <clears throat> what you also see is when you search and on, on Upwork, you can set up searches. Obviously, when you look for projects, definitely set up your template searches uh, so that you have a steady stream of relevant projects that you're getting in your newsfeed. Uh, when you check out how many projects there are available at certain categories of pricing, you see massive decreases in available projects at hourly rates that when you go from 95 to 100 USD per hour, there is a psychological barrier there that clients are not willing to pay or fewer clients are willing to pay. And there is another one at 150, I think, and definitely another one at 200. So you see human psychology at play here because the number of project goes, projects goes down as you increase pricing and you do want to benchmark yourself against competitors, against the value that you're delivering and also the, the deal volume that you want. All of that matters here. All right, so that's all best practices for Upwork. Let me know if you want more information on this. I can try to pull up another video at some point in the future where I dive into some of these points. Since um, I think I've you know been quite successful in Upwork, I'll be happy to share my my thoughts on it if if relevant. Now, what didn't work, right? Upwork has traction 
in projects, in and outbound. Fiverr has traction in gigs. TopTal has traction in hunting for you for based on top talent. And Catalan has probably no traction in, in most areas and is trying to figure it out. Now, Upwork is continuously trying to evolve itself in order to grab market share from other platforms, which means they will release new features. And it's either going to take time for them to have, you know, see progress and traction with these features, or they're just not going to stick. In my opinion, the three, actually four things that don't work right now is expert vetted program, agencies, projects, and consultations. Unfortunately, I think these are all the innovations that Upwork came up with in the last couple of years. So essentially none of them have really made a difference. Let me tell you a little bit more about those. The expert vetted program is supposed to be a program for the top 1% of, of freelancers. You talk to a talent manager, you may get interviewed by an expert. Um, I only talked to a talent manager, which was a very friendly lady from Upwork. I loved and enjoyed the discussion and the inside views that she shared on what's going on in Upwork. But after that discussion and me getting that badge, nothing really happened. It's supposed to be for the 1% and Upwork, I think, is trying to win enterprise clients that they can then pair with the 1% in order to increase custom lifetime value, deal size, and revenue for their own business. But it doesn't work, at least as far as I can say. Maybe I don't have the right skill set in order to work with enterprise clients. Maybe I don't have my profile set up properly um, since there is an entire backend infrastructure that's happening here. I don't want to be judgmental, but in my case, it doesn't work. I've heard Evan Schwartz, who is, I think, the biggest upworker, say that it doesn't work. So, you know, at some point you have to accept that it's probably not that valuable. In addition to that, what's a little bit annoying, it's supposed to be the highest tier category of batch that you get on the platform, and these badges definitely matter. But regular clients outside of the enterprise program on the platform will not see that badge. So when I switch to on my profile, if I were to switch to see public view, they would not see the expert vetted batch. They would see the top rated plus batch. The top rated plus batch is great, but the expert vetted expert vetted batch is better. I don't know why Upwork does that. Um, I have no idea. Makes no sense to me. Now, the second one is agencies. At some point I was overwhelmed with demand. I had literally zero hours left on my calendar. And so that's when I tried to say, hey, maybe I can... I can bring on friends that can join the platform. I create an agency for them and then I can cross sell and take a take a certain cut on what they're making. But um, in my category, that hasn't worked uh, because people come to me to work with me based on my experience as a, as a founder and as a VC, um, you know, across the topics like go to market, product market fit and venture capital. They don't necessarily want to work with someone else which is how, how how Upwork is set up to begin with, right? It's individual freelancers that you specifically choose. And I, as a client, that's why I can say this, when I hired developers, for instance, um, or was interviewing developers for our projects, and all of a sudden I wouldn't be talking to the person I reached out to, I would be talking to some junior person or to some sales rep, I would be like, what the heck is going on? I didn't reach out to a sales rep, I re reached out to a specific freelancer that I want to work with and I want to know that I work with them. And I think that's happening with clients on, on Upwork. And so if you are an agency, that entire dynamic kind of gets crushed. That being said, there are definitely agencies that have been semi-successful. I think where they work is in, is in software, uh, especially if you're transparent about it, in design. So in anything that's a little bit more, and don't, don't, don't get me wrong here, a little bit more commoditized, where you're not depending on the expert knowledge of a specific person that is charging high, high rates. So agencies for me didn't work. I tried it, unfortunately not a success. And then projects and consultations are a really interesting development, especially projects at Upwork. Projects, for, in my perspective, are essentially um, Upwork's attempt to compete with Fiverr in order to, to, to launch a gig-like um, in, in specialization or gigs on Upwork, essentially, which I would have loved if it worked because gigs are like productized services and as a service provider, productized services are really the only way to scale beyond a certain limit unless you're selling into enterprise customers which come with very large contracts. But again, then you're competing with uh, McKinsey, Boston Consulting, Bain, or tier two consulting firms like Accenture, um, PwC, and, and, um, and EY is another one that you know, that they just are set up for success when it comes to that and you are not. So um, uh, projects are the only way to technically scale or productize services, which products are. Unfortunately, as far as I can say, I haven't really seen anyone um, you really use projects. I haven't seen any freelancers really succeeding with it. Yes, it's driving some limited revenue for some. For me, it has driven zero, although I have listed quite a few, of pro quite a few projects. Maybe I'm not good at it, but in my opinion, 
that's just not why clients come to Upwork. And uh, then in addition to that, when you review the platform from a client perspective, what you are seeing is that projects are also not that visible on the interface. They show them, Upwork does show them, but it's not as visible as, as talent. And then consultations are technically what I, what I do a lot when I get an inbound or an outbound, I have to jump on 30 minute introduction calls with clients. I would love to monetize those, but obviously you have to build report in some way and, you know, and scope things out. And so maybe you don't even want to charge because you, you may risk getting a, a poor review, but consultations are technically um, the, the in a second attempt of, of Upwork to give you, know, you the ability to sell a very specific scope in a repeated manner which should help you scale, which may allow you to hire talent to take over some of your own work. But um, I have seen literally zero interest in consultations. Again, it may be driven by me not offering the right ones, but honestly, I think it's it's just a matter of what Upwork has product market fit with where it has traction and that's, that's projects, uh, whether it's out or inbound. Now, major problems with Upwork, that's the last one. I know that this is a pretty long video, but I think there is some value, I hope, um, in this video. The last one is on, on problems with Upwork. And there are at least three, three major problems that ultimately made me decide that I'm going to try to evolve away from that platform. The first one is scalability. And I think I touched on it multiple times across this one. Customers come to me for my time, for my face. My face is shown on my profile. Agencies don't work. Projects don't work. So I'm selling my hours, the hours that I have in a given day. I have done that successfully, which means I'm capping and which means I'm kept at that revenue level. And I, as I said, I also can't, you know, um, I can't increase my prices forever because the type of customer on Upwork doesn't allow for that. They're not that rich customers, they're not enterprise customers. So I'm limited in the revenue I can make. That's fine if I'm trying to make a little bit of money on the site or if I don't have high ambitions, but if you want to scale a business, that's not the right thing for you. So you have to get outside of, you have to get successful outside of Upwork, which is incredibly hard, outside of marketplaces, which is incredibly hard as a service provider. The second one is customer lifetime value and customer quality. Uh, both Upwork and Fiverr have relatively poor customer quality, in my opinion. There are definitely some high paying clients, but I haven't never seen a client on Upwork that makes more than 1.5 million revenue uh, annually. So that always limits your ability to charge, to make money. And frankly, I, I, you probably have experienced this, but clients that have, they're very tight on budget, let's say they're paying you 200 USD, are the most painful clients because they only have very little money and they want to get a high perceived return on investment. Whereas clients that are potentially paying you thousands a week are not as challenging uh, and, and much more experienced when it comes to business dealing. And so the customer quality actually determines your success as a business. It determines your quality of life and sleep and everything else. And it's poor on Upwork, in my opinion, mostly. Uh, and then the third one here is cost. Upwork um, used to have a tiered pricing model where they would charge 20% for the first 500 USD that you make with a client, 10% for the next, but not for the next, for up to 10,000 USD. So they would subtract the first 500 and then 5% from there on. That used to be fine for me. I was always saying, hey, uh, you know, Upwork, I'm, I'm fine with you charging that money. I appreciate your support. You got me that client. I otherwise would have to hustle for a very long time to find large clients that pay me more than 10K. Uh, but now they have switched to charging 10% flat. I think that does, un well, unfortunately, we can talk about that. That does support a lot of uh, lower earning or lower priced service providers, which is what I think the majority of people are on Upwork. Um, but it does not help someone that tries to make a lot of money on Upwork because it just gets very expensive over time. It makes a 5% difference on my revenues. And I think that is predatory, which is a problem I see with many marketplaces. Marketplaces essentially, and this is a little bit of my political views here. Uh, you can skip this if you want to, but marketplaces in my opinion are more like governments, which are supposed or countries essentially, which are supposed to be marketplaces giving the right environment for people to connect and, and do business with each other and thrive. Since governments suck at that, we need marketplaces. And, and, and it's, like a, it's like a tax. And I've never seen a state um, or a country or a government, whatever you want to call it, double their taxes um, from one day to the other and, and you know, not really give you any options. So I think that's extremely client unfriendly. And as a, as a freelancer, you are a client on Upwork. But other than that, again, I mentioned at the beginning, we're going to support it again. Huge fan of Upwork. It has given me the ability to kickstart my, my business. It has given me tremendous client relationships that I love. 
um, and I will always be on Upwork for um, for for the social proof because I have public reviews. They're tied to money. I cannot fake it. And <clears throat> when I need, uh, when I know that I can reduce my price in case uh, ever, my revenue ever gets tight and I need cash to, you know, to pay to make payroll. I can I can go back to Upwork, reduce my price, and most likely find customers pretty quickly because of my traction, my 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 past track record on Upwork. So definitely grateful for it. But there are definitely also issues to uh, to consider. All right, I'll pause here uh, in order to not go much further than thirty minutes. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up. I would I would love that. Questions, shoot them in the comment section below. I'll get back to you. And if there are recurring questions, I'll definitely make sure to record videos around that. And <clears throat> would really appreciate if you could subscribe to the channel. It helps content creators. Um, and, and it's just, you know, just beautiful. If you see someone subscribing, it means, it means a lot. All right. Hope you enjoyed this. Talk soon. Bye-bye.